in the 2016 NFL Draft. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Vernon Hargraves III, defensive back, Florida. Area code 813, Tampa kid, goes home and plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I love this pick, Chris. He doesn't have the ideal size that you're looking for. He doesn't have the ideal speed. But when you turn on the film, this kid knows how to play football. He can play right corner, left corner. He can play press coverage or off. And he's a good tackler. And when he's on, he's on. He can come off the corner as a blitzer and wreak havoc. And I see him go to work in the SEC three years in a row as all team, first team, all SEC. I like the big mouth. Well, you look at Vernon Hargraves, at one point in time, John, he looked like a top seven pick. He dropped a little bit because of the lack of lane. In fact, he was beat over the top some. And you look at him, you mentioned tackling, outstanding. I thought he had a good career, but his best years were early on. His performance kind of leveled off or he regressed a little bit. That was a concern. But here at 13, to the 11, and you thought maybe he could get down to Miami at 13. Tampa Bay moved down, still got him. Can't argue with the move. I like Vernon Hargraves better than Eli Apple, who the Giants took at 10. Yeah, I have some concerns about Vernon Hargraves. I understand why Tampa Bay took him, but I have concerns about his consistency. I have concerns about his speed. I have concerns about his competitiveness. When you bring up some of the plays here and you take a look at them, I'll point out some of them definitely jump off the screen at me. You know, one of the first things I talk about here is we talk about competitiveness and his speed. I can't tell which one it is necessarily in this kind of situation. Here you have a situation where he's going to get taken across the field taking these, going to be covering a wide receiver across the field, it's a, it's a throwback to a wide receiver, and you look at him here in the middle of the field, there is no reason, I don't care if you run 4-5 or, or not, that he is not on his horse trying to chase down this play because he had clear vision to it, and the play kind of declared itself. Here we're talking about, is this speed, or is this competitiveness here, where they, he gets split and cover four, the only reason why he catches up to this play is because the ball's underthrown, but if, when he didn't think he could catch up to it, he wasn't on his horse again. Here it's a situation where the play is single high cover, He's outside leverage. You hear the wide receiver stems him outside and takes him to the post. He can't make up the ground. And those are things that are just glaring that kind of stand out to me. I just don't know if it's competitiveness or if it's, or if it's long speed. But those receivers only get faster and they only get more competitive in the NFL. I thought he was a competitor, though. I, I tend to disagree. I saw him tackle. I like this competitiveness. We'll see what happens. We're going to find out do know. One thing we do know, he's played in college against Beckham and Landry and Amari Cooper and Kelvin Benjamin. He knows somewhat what he's going to see when he gets to the pros. That's Tampa's pick. New Orleans is next. Boy, do they need help on defense. We'll be back.